You're very welcome back to Ireland AM. From growing up in Belfast at the height of the Troubles to spending almost 18 years in total in prison, former mobster turned author and CEO Stephen Gillen has lived a truly remarkable life. Now Stephen is sharing his story with the world via his new book, Extraordinary, The Search for a Life Worth Living. And he's been good enough to stop in now to chat about it. Good morning, Stephen. Good to see you, sir. Hi, hi, Martin. How are you doing? It's, right. it's always wonderful to be home. You know, as I said to you before, I was uh, kissing the ground in my head. <laughs> really, honest to God. So. We, we, we should have had a welcoming committee to greet you off the plane. <laughs> anyway, your, your story is just amazing. Uh, your, the, 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 this book, Extraordinary, this is your third book so what's the angle with this one this is a lot more detailed you've got the untold chapters in there martin you know i've had a team around me with this one i've been privileged enough you know she's got the literature agent you've got uh, the editorial team and the publisher and all that corners publishing uh, agent fox media have to mention them they've done an amazing job that's been a great help so it's really it's all in there you know the whole bit yeah, it takes you, it takes us through a lot of your upbringing, particularly maybe the years in Belfast. Tell us about that. It was so nice to come back. It always is, you know. You was brought up, uh, Elaine. So, in them times, there was a lot of darkness uh, for a lot of people. I was born born in England, but as a six month year old, I was taken back to the North Belfast Divis Flats. We started at, you know, mm -hmm. all my family. They're all from there and the borders there. You know, I've uh, family in Dublin as well, so I was taken back there. I stayed there till I was nine, but it was right in the right in the thick of it in them days. You know, the early seventies. Mm -hmm. You watched a seven year old out of being shot. You, you, you saw some horrific things when you were there. There was so much of it, Martin, for all of us there, you know, and the thing is peace, you know, uh, uh, for all of us. Irish people are, you know, we say the most wonderful people, you know, we really are. But it was very, very bad. There was so much going on, but I did, you know, I had to watch a, watch a guy who was shot in the middle of a riot uh, die, die in front of me. And he was, he, was, he was calling for his mother. I mean, I was seven. To me, that was... So you were seven, yeah. I, I was seven. Yeah. That was horrendous to me, you know. So I, you know, I had to, yeah. had to yeah. keep that. What was your home and family life at that point, uh, like at that point? Because was there any attempts to kind of help you, shelter you from it? Or were you all just very much exposed? Bring us through, just bring us through what your life was like then. This is the thing. I mean, my my family there were very God-fearing, kind, kind people they was. They were really old school, you know, mm. Elaine. Uh, inside the door, it was very much like that. Outside the door, it was something else, of mm. course. OK, all right. So you're a house angel, street devil. Is that what you're saying, Stephen? When I was allowed out, I was I was really the kid, Martin, who was upstairs looking out the window thinking, oh, they're all out. How can I get out? But I was never really allowed out because of the trouble. So that was the, that was the truth of it. Okay. Okay. Did that change when you went back to England? Yeah. I mean, I was your uh, nine-year-old with the case. My surrogate mother died of cancer, so they said, "Oh, you know, he needs a woman's hand." So that was the reason I was back to back to back to the UK, back to back to London, the East End, and all this stuff. And it it went from bad to worse, really, really after that. You know, that was that was a very tough you, time. You went to, through you went through care homes and foster homes. All of this kind of stuff. A lot of them was violent. You know, a lot of a lot of yeah, bad yeah, stuff was going yeah. on there. When you say it went from bad to worse, I mean, I'm interested to see what actually your life was like then. I mean, you did. Uh, we spoke about it earlier. That you spent 18 years in prison in total. But what? led you down that path specifically and did you start on little things did it grow bring us bring us through that if you would the little bit of lane was uh yeah i was you know i had to survive i was feral of course i didn't have the instruction i didn't have the guidance i didn't have i didn't have the security so i went through a lot of children's homes a lot of them there was a lot of violence you'd try and look after the younger ones so we'd run away and come back and get in trouble. Stupid stuff that went into big stuff. But then I was groomed then, yeah. right, you know, very, very early on and went from uh, petty crime into really serious organised crime really, really quickly. With, okay. with gangs. Because yeah. like. the guys who, who, who were at the top, at the top level, they'll see somebody like you, they'll see your vulnerability and they say, well, you know, prove your loyalty here. There's a gun. It's all of this kind of stuff. And what you find as well, Martin, is even the ones a little bit further up, They'd been through it the same way, yeah, and didn't know any 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 more either. But they've kind of gone up, got older, so they had these blinkers on. They think this is the only way, which of course is the wrong message. Yeah, of course. What, it what is. crime did you just get the, the largest block of time? I mean, what, what did you actually do, and what were you convicted of? 
Well, there was, you know, it was serious organised crime. I was around a lot of the really, really notorious high-level target criminals of today. That's to be said, Elaine. Let's just yeah. say how it was. Me, I had three trials at the Old Bailey for armed robbery. I beat the first one. Second one, I beat it. I'd got a uh, possession of a firearm. The third one, there were shots fired at the police and all that after a two-year operation with the flying squad. And I got 17 years for that as a Category A prison. Category A. What does Category A mean? Well, it's the highest, the highest security category. I was released in it too as well, Elaine, which, yeah. which is quite rare. Yeah. Well, were you to... kept segregated from the rest of the prisoners then? Or what, what, what way did that work? Were you kind of considered the, the most violent and dangerous in that kind of court? That's what they say. I mean, Category A, they say the definition is uh, highly dangerous to security, uh, um, uh, the public, the police, the security of the state. So it's all, all, you know, this is what it would be. So a different prison, really, Elaine. You know, you're in prison within prisons, and it's all about security, and you're not really in the general prison population. population yeah. So it gives give you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Give you an idea. Yeah. So w what happened in prison that made you decide, I need to look? Because generally, people go out, they can't find a job, they go back to their old life, and they wind up back in prison again. So what was it that happened in prison that made you decide, I'm changing my life? There are many things, my and I'd seen through that life for a long time. I mean, I had friends who I'd known for 25 years, and of course, when it turned the wrong way, they set me up to get me killed. So there's a lot of messages all the way through. You think, this is no kind of life at all. How did I arrive here? But, you know, I'd definitely come to a place, you know, where I couldn't hurt no one no more, myself, my family. I couldn't, you know, so, you know, people say, was you mad, was you bad? I'd say, look, you know, I may have been all of them things at one time, but really what it was with me, I had the opportunity, I had the courage, I had, I had the circumstance, I had the opportunity to find my way back to myself, mine. Yeah, yeah, it's, it, look, nobody's born bad. Yeah. It, it, it's just your environment that, that will dictate that. How so, did, yeah, I'm just wondering how you got back to yourself. I mean, how did you...